Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Amanda. I'm a second year vet student and in today's video we are going to be talking about my experience interviewing for vet school. So one of the most common questions I get asked is what my interview experience was like when I was applying to vet school. And I previously made a video on my channel talking about how I prepared for my vet school interview in terms of the resources I used, how I practiced, and all of those details. However, I thought I would make a video talking about my actual experience the day of my interview so that you guys know what to expect when you go to your interview and you're not walking in blind. So that's what this video is all about. It is going to be my experience from the time I woke up up the day of my interview to the time my interview ended and I will walk you through my day and then I will also answer some of the common questions that I get asked such as what to wear and how long the interview was. Okay so let's flash back to the day of my interview. My interview was on May 13th 2019 at two o'clock. That was very specific. <laughs> But anyway, the point of that being was that I am not a morning person whatsoever. And if I remember correctly, the three times that you could have for your interview was, oh, maybe there was four. I think it was eight o'clock, 11 o'clock, two o'clock, and four o'clock. So for me, the two o'clock time worked out perfectly. It was just luck of the draw, but honestly, I got really lucky because like I said, not a morning person. So knowing that my interview was at two o'clock was nice because I could sleep in a little bit the morning of, and uh, honestly, I was so nervous the night before that I didn't sleep very well anyway so having those couple extra hours in the morning was really helpful and then I didn't feel like I was rushed getting ready for my interview which was really nice I think it helped keep my nerves down but then also part of me did not want the four o'clock time because I think if I had to sit there all day and think about my interview I would have gone crazy so anyway back to the morning of I woke up and I honestly woke up not super nervous and I think it was just because it hadn't really sunk in yet that my interview was that day but I woke up and I instantly put on Netflix and the reason why I did that was because I did not want to practice for my interview or think about my interview until I went to my interview. I talked about it in my video where I explained how I prepared for this vet school interview but recapping that video I did not want to practice up until the last minute which is kind of surprising for me because I am a crammer. Typically when it comes to exams or tests I study up until the very last minute but for some reason for this interview I didn't feel the need to cram or I didn't feel the need to practice right up until I left. So I put on something distracting in the morning so that I didn't think about it. Obviously this is personal preference but I feel like for me it worked out really well and it kept me calm. Now let's talk about getting ready for your interview and we will talk about what to wear, hair, makeup, shoes, all of the important things. So one of the things that I get asked most commonly, and honestly, one of the things that I was most curious about when I was getting ready for my interview was what to wear. And honestly, there's really no right answer to this. As long as you are dressed in something that looks professional, you are good to go. And the reason why I say this is because you want to be comfortable and confident the day of your interview. For some people, they will feel comfortable and confident in skirt and heels. And for other people, that could be pants and flats. My biggest, biggest tip is do not wear something that you are not used to wearing. I debated between wearing heels and flats and honestly because I don't wear heels very often I knew I was going to be super uncomfortable in them and I was going to be so self-conscious about the fact that I can't walk in heels that I was going to be distracted my whole interview. So that is why I decided to go with flats. However like I said if you are comfortable in heels and you know how to walk in them then go for it. As long as you are wearing something that you feel confident and comfortable in then you are good to go. But if if you're struggling with some inspiration or ideas, I will pop a couple of pictures up on the screen of interview outfits that I based my outfit off of. So now that we have talked about what to wear, let's move on to hair, makeup, and accessories. So in terms of hair, guys, girls, this goes for both of you. I would recommend wearing your hair somewhat off your face. The reason why I say this is because if your hair is in front of your face or if you get nervous and you're fidgeting with your hair, it's just gonna be a distraction. So style your hair in a way that you are not going to fiddle with it if you're nervous. Oh, another thing that I didn't experience personally but I have heard from people is don't dye your hair the day before your interview because I know a girl who dyed her hair 
and literally had hair dye all over her forehead for the day of her interview. Uh, it obviously didn't affect her results because she got into vet school, but uh, she just told people to save yourself from personal embarrassment. Don't dye your hair the day before. <laughs> okay, also boys, girls, makeup. Like I said before with your outfit, wear something that you are comfortable with. If you never wear lipstick like myself, don't put it on. I was going to wear lipstick the day of my interview and I had gotten ready and I went to go walk out the door and I looked in the mirror and I had lipstick all over my teeth. So I'm sure you can imagine that lipstick came off very quickly because I was like, that is all I need is to be talking to my interviewers and have lipstick all over my teeth. Personally, I don't normally wear a ton of makeup. I'll wear like a BB cream, some mascara, some blush, and then chapstick. So that is what I did on the day of my interview. I just wanted to keep it as natural as possible and I wanted to do something that I felt comfortable and confident in. So I just did what I would normally do if I was going out. However, if you normally rock fake lashes and colorful eyeshadow, then go for it. The one thing I will say about that though is that you want the interviewers to be focused on your answers to the interview questions and unfortunately some interviewers may be distracted by purple eyeshadow. They shouldn't be but that is just something to keep in mind that you want them to be focused on your answers and not what is on your face. Okay so the day of I got ready really slowly, I was relaxed, put my outfit on, did my makeup, did my hair. As I'm about to walk out the door, it starts pouring rain. Little bit of backstory, I had just moved into a new apartment for the summer and do you think I could find my umbrella anywhere? So all I'm thinking is I just put my outfit together, I'm wearing a white shirt, I just did my hair and I just did my makeup. If I walk outside right now, I'm going to show up to my interview looking like a drowned rat. Anyway, so I ended up getting my rain jacket and putting it over top of my head like this so I could run from my apartment to my car. Thankfully, by the time I arrived to my interview, it had stopped raining. Thank you, Mother Nature. Which was very fortunate because it was about a five minute walk from the parking lot to the building where I was gonna interview. That is another tip that I have. If it makes you feel more comfortable, go to the campus or go to the building where your interview is going to be held ahead of time. My interviews were on the University of Guelph campus, which is where I did my undergrad. So I was very familiar with the building and the parking situation. So I didn't feel like I needed to go ahead of time. However, make sure you know how long it's going to take you to walk from the parking lot to the building, where you need to park, if you need to pay for parking. That way, if you know those things in advance, it's just one less thing to stress about the day of your interview. Okay, so now that we have arrived at our interview spot, let's talk about what to expect during the interview. So this is obviously going to depend where you're interviewing and the style of interview that the school is conducting. However, I'm just going off my experience at the Ontario Veterinary College and how they conduct their interviews. So OVC does an MMI format interview. Obviously this year things were a little bit different because everything had to be online, but normally it is an MMI style interview. So if you are unfamiliar with an MMI, it is a multiple mini interview. And the way OVC runs theirs is that there is eight different stations with two different interviewers in each station. How the interview works is that you show up the day of and you will have a small 15 minute orientation before your interview starts. During this time, they will go over everything you need to know about the interview, what to do if you have to go pee, what you can bring into the interview with you, and pretty much just walk you through how the day is going to look. So I showed up, I got signed in, I went through the orientation, and then I got a little number, and that was the room that I was starting my interview in. So basically how the MMI works is a bell will ring, and that starts the time for two minutes. During those two minutes, you read a scenario on the outside of the door of your interview room. And this scenario is what you are expected to talk about when you go into the interview. So during those two minutes, you don't enter the room, you have to stay outside of the interview room. And this is when you can think about how you're gonna answer the question. You can take as much time as you need to read over the question. In terms of taking notes, you can't bring your own notebook in. You will be provided a sheet of paper and a pencil the day of your interview, and that is the only thing that you can make notes on. So once your two minutes is up, another bell will ring, and this indicates that you can enter the interview room. You don't have to enter the room at this point, but just know that from the time that second bell rings, you have eight minutes to answer the question, and that eight minutes is the only time you are going to have to interact with the interviewers. I never entered the room right away when that two minute bell went off. I always took a couple more seconds to just compose myself, take a deep breath before I stepped into the interview room to make sure that my nerves were in check. So now that the eight minutes has started, you can enter the interview room and 
Although I can't talk specifically about the questions that I was asked in my interview, I'm not gonna bore you guys with tips on how to interview. There's probably a ton of other videos out on YouTube giving you pointers on how to do that. And also I find interview styles differ from person to person. So you just have to find something that works for you. If it didn't take you the full eight minutes to answer your question, then you can either stay in the interview room or you can leave. If you stay in the interview room, the interviewers can't really interact with you at all. So you're just gonna be sitting there in silence, but it will give you the opportunity to add things if something suddenly pops into your head that you wanted to include in your answer. I personally found it really awkward to just sit in front of an interviewer and not say anything. But like I said, it's personal preference. I chose to leave the room once I was done answering my interview question. The only thing with that that I will warn is that once you leave the interview room, you cannot go back in. So if you leave the interview room and you suddenly think of something that you wanted to put in your answer, too bad, you can't. <laughs> So take that into consideration when you decide if you wanna stay in the room or leave the room. So that's what happens if you finish talking before the eight minutes is up. However, if you are still talking when the bell rings again to indicate that your eight minutes is up, you have to wrap up as quickly as possible and get out of the room because time does not stop in between stations. So this interview format might be kind of confusing and honestly, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but basically you have two minutes to read the scenario and eight minutes to answer the question. What I mean when I say time doesn't stop is that when the bell rings indicating that your eight minutes is up to answer the question, your two minutes automatically start for when you're supposed to be reading the next scenario. So you need to take into account the time it's gonna take you to walk from one interview room to another because that is going to be a part of your two minutes. With that being said, the rooms are literally right beside each other like it probably takes you five seconds to go from one room to another but just keep that in mind that your two minutes starts as soon as the eight minute mark ends so that is how the mmi works you go through eight different stations seven of those stations are scenario based so they are going to be based on ethical scenarios issues in vet med or just common communication questions and then your eighth station is known as a rest station or a biff station so this is the station where interviewers will ask you questions about yourself and your vet school application. This is the station that most resembles a normal interview and this is where you get to sell yourself and talk about all of the great things that you have done leading up to your vet school application. The order of stations that you get is completely random so you could have your BIF station right at the beginning or you could have it at the very end or somewhere in the middle. My BIF station was closer to the end of my interview so it really is just luck of the draw where your BIF station ends up. One thing that I really did enjoy about the MMI style of interview is that because you have different interviewers for every single station, it's like a fresh start every scenario that you get. If you completely mess up one station or you feel like you didn't answer the question very well, honestly, it's okay because you have seven other stations to make up for it. I really liked this because it just felt like a fresh start every single interview and I feel like it kept my nerves down because although I had to make an impression on 16 different people, if I felt like I wasn't super strong in one of my stations, I knew I could just forget about that station, move on to the next one, and try and make a better impression on those two interviewers. Obviously, the MMIs are very personal preference if you are going to like them or not, or if you're going to like this interview style, but I personally really enjoyed it, and I felt like it was a really good way to highlight different skills such as communication, ethical thinking, and critical thinking. Once you are done all of the stations, you go into another room for a debriefing. In this debriefing, they just talk to you guys about what to expect in the next couple weeks, when you're gonna hear. They tell you to relax, don't think about your interview anymore, it's over and done with, and honestly, that is the best tip ever. Once it's done, don't think about it anymore. You can't change the results, so honestly, sitting there worrying about it, not worth it. So from the time I arrived for my interview to the time I left, I think it was almost two hours. Hours. The actual interview itself is going to be 80 minutes because you get 10 minutes per station. And then with the orientation at the beginning and the debrief tacked on at the end, I think my time at the interview was close to two hours. Once I was done my interview, I went home and I treated myself. I went out for dinner. And like I said, I tried not to think about my interview as much as possible. It's easier said than done because the wait between your interview to when you hear if you got accepted into vet school or not is honestly the longest time of your life but the more you try not to think about it, the quicker that time is going to go. So now you guys know a little bit more about what happens the day of your interview, how you should dress and how you should prepare for it, and what to expect when you're actually at the interview.
Honestly, everyone's interview experience is going to be slightly different, but if I can give one tip that I feel like applies to absolutely everyone is be confident in yourself. It can be a very intimidating process going to your vet school interview, but honestly, you deserve to be there. You deserve that spot. So be proud of that fact. Be confident in the fact that you deserve to be there and that you are going to go out and absolutely crush your interview. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a little bit of a better idea of what to expect the day of your interview. If you have absolutely any questions that I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to answer all of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something useful out of it. If you liked it, please feel free to give it a like down below. And if you want to see more videos about my journey through vet school or more tips on how to get into vet school, then please feel free to subscribe. It means a ton to me and you guys can follow along on my crazy vet school journey. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.